So welcome to the Inspired to Be Authentic podcast. I'm your host, Matt Lansadell. Inspired to Be Authentic is a podcast where we converse with people who are living their most authentic lives. We get real with our guests and talk openly about how they live with courage to be themselves. We explore barriers they have overcome to be more authentic and aligned to themselves and their purpose. So today is episode number six, and I have a really awesome guest for you guys today. Um, we're gonna be talking about sexuality on the spiritual journey. And we're going to kind of let the conversation go where it wants to go, but we're going to be uh, focusing a little bit on um, masculine, feminine, talking about sexuality, sensuality, and kind of how this, this sort of stuff plays out on the spiritual journey. Um, so I have Will Blunderfield today with us. Welcome, Will. Thank you. It's nice to be here. So I'm just going to introduce you formally, and then I'll let you kind of take it from, from there. Um, so Will Blunderfield has been teaching yoga throughout Canada, the U.S., and Asia for the last 11 years. In 2008, he completed his first training with the Vancouver School of Yoga, followed by a hot yoga certification deeply rooted in the Hatha Yoga lineage. As he became more and more fascinated with the mind-body connection, he decided to pursue a degree in psychology at the UBC with a minor in food, nutrition, and health. He recently completed an eight-month Kundalini Yoga teacher training program and mindfulness-based stress reduction facilitator training from the University of Massachusetts Medical School. Will also performs original Kirtan Sacred Song in his classes, retreats, and workshops, and his music is released through network record Sony. Uh, Gabor Mate uh, says Will's voice is supple and ethereal, his musicality impeccable, and he delivers his songs from a deep place within that reaches our hearts and souls, and I completely agree. Um, Will completed an associate degree in musical theater from American Musical, uh, musical and Dr Dramatic Academy of New York. Uh, and his favorite performances include opening for Ace of Bass and working with Brian West, producer of Nelly Furtado, Maroon 5, and Bono on his recent album, Wild Horses. So that is a, a mouthful, but I always like to get that out of the way so then we can allow you to kind of talk about who you are and uh, a little bit about, you know, what's your purpose, what's your passion. So why don't you take it, take it from there? Yeah, yeah, uh, where to start? Um, <laughs> Yeah, my, I mean, my purpose, I like the, the, the teachings of yoga. They say your passion uh, is your purpose. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm really passionate about these days about being naked. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I love that you're shirtless on this interview. That makes me happy. <laughs> yeah, you should get shirtless too, man. You <laughs> nice to yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you're comfortable, if not, no worries. No, I'm good for now. Cool. We'll see, we'll see how the conversation goes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He likes uh, strip, strip tease, uh podcast. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, um, so yeah, the, your passion is your purpose. So uh, basically, that means like your, your, uh, your dharma, like your life mission, this is all like the, the Vedas, Yeah. Is your, is your heart's desire. And so I think I spent a lot, many years sort of feeling sort of anxious and, and having body dysmorphia. So the nudity piece, that, that's really helped me. Um, start to overcome that body dysmorphia and start to really feel more and more at home in my physical apparatus. Yeah, that's so great. That's a, nice, a nice thing. Yeah. Um, and then my other passions are, are music. I like to write songs and, and I love Sanskrit uh, and Gurmukhi mantras. Gurmukhi is like a Northern Indian language that I find really beautiful. I was yeah. in India last year learning about mantra and yoga uh, up in the Himalayas and it was really a life-giving experience for me. Yeah. yeah. And then um, yoga. Yeah. So nakedness, music, and yeah. yoga are my passions right now that really light me up. <clears throat> yeah. You're, um, so I, we, we must have got connected when I was living in Vancouver because you were on my social media. Um, and then one day you, you put a post out about having world music, and I'm really into world music. So I, I searched you out on, on iTunes. And started to listen to your album, Wild Horses. And I was like, wow, this is like a really good album. Like, it, it, I was surprised. I listened to it for a couple months straight and just, you know, would jam in the shower. I love Kirtan music. I love repetitive music because it kind of, it helps me soothe some of my anxieties. And um, mantras are really good for that. And then just started to follow some of your stuff and what you're doing on social media, on Facebook. And um, you're a very passionate man. You have a lot of conviction. You have a lot of um, passion. And you, like you say, it's fueled by your purpose. Some um, what's, what's, what's your, your biggest mission right now? Like, what are you trying to bring forward into the world that you're so passionate about? Uh, I'm really passionate about men's work, men's and work, expanding, expanding the, 
you know, I've been in a lot of men's groups over the last few years, um, and, and it's, it's often been like gay men's group or straight men's group. And then if you're, if you're bisexual um, or pansexual, it's kind of like there's, there's just not much space I found. I found many members of these groups were very biphobic, the mm -hmm. gay guys and the straight guys. Yeah. Um, so I, I, had, I probably bounced between five different groups and it just never felt like quite the right fit. And I was like, you know what, William? Maybe this is a sign from the universe to just start your own. Mm -hmm. And so I started my own men's group um, in January and I'm super happy with it. Uh, the guys in it, gay, straight, bi, trans, whatever, from all around the world. We meet on Monday mornings on Zoom, 7.07 yeah. Pacific Standard Time is our open house if you'd like to check it out. Okay, cool. And yeah, it's, it's been really, <clears throat> a really uh, life enhancing experience to just realize that, you know, if you can't, it's kind of like that. I dated this girl uh, last year and she said, if you can't get a show, create the show like she mm -hmm. was always trying to get in musicals and trying to you know get hired because she's a musician yeah. and she was really hard and she's got a great voice and she's super talented but she just realized instead of like putting your power outside of yourself just take initiative and make your own thing and so that yeah. really inspired me and she said yeah, that. i like that i like that i've done quite a bit of naked yoga um I did try your sexual kung fu class online. You have the the up link on on Pornhub, and I gave it a shot. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was it was very different for me. Um, but that's it's an area that I'm I'm really wanting to explore right now because I think, and that's that's why I wanted to bring you on. Actually, one of the a little bit of a selfish reason for me is to explore some of. Um, for me on the spiritual journey, I've, I've, I feel like maybe what I've done is done a lot of repression of my sexuality and kind of really been focusing on how to have intimacy and how to have sensuality and some of these things that I had no idea how to have as a, as a gay man. And I was very hypersexual in my 20s and now I'm kind of going and I feel like I've swung the pendulum to the other side and I feel a little bit stuck. So I wanted to kind of, and I know I'm not, I'm not alone in this experience. I've talked to a lot of people and some of my clients have this experience. So I wanted to maybe pick your brain on how people can, um, maybe, maybe we can take it from both aspects. Actually, we can take it for people that are struggling with hypersexuality and for people that are struggling with um, more repression of their sexuality and how we can become a little bit more balanced in, in how we, we bring our sexuality into this world. Mm, that's a really great thing to talk about. I think, I think a lot of us have struggled with that. Yeah. Um, Kundalini Yoga, we learned about the Piscean age and that ended in 2012, but we're still on a cusp period. So the sort of the highlights of the Piscean age was that it was very sexually repressive, very uh, homophobic, very misogynistic. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and many um, ancient cultures said that it was going to be like the darkest age of humanity. And so a lot of us are still kind of coming out of that and healing from that really dark time when our sexuality was literally cut off. You know, a lot of, there's a lot of sexual abuse. There's things like circumcision. The list goes on where the dominator system deliberately wounds men and women in the root so that we're cut off from our power source. Mm. So for me, what I realized through this practice of Kundalini yoga and then, then Taoist, you know, Chinese bedroom arts, such Kung Fu is that, you can't separate sexuality from life force. It's the same thing. Yeah, I agree. You know, Abraham Hicks says, follow your bliss, or um, Joseph Campbell says, and then she, she quotes him. Mm -hmm. Abraham Hicks is a spiritual teacher that I, I follow. And um, yeah, so they, they deliberately pinched us off from our bliss so that we would be good consumers in the dominator system. Mm. Uh, because when you, when you don't feel good in your own body, you look outside yourself for something to complete you whether it's uh, drug or food or alcohol or approval. Mm -hmm. um, so feeling at home in our body temples for me is the most paramount thing in the men's work that I'm doing and really just practicing what I preach. And it's actually kind of fun because like if I want to lead all these groups, I actually have to eat healthy. Mm -hmm. uh, I have to get up, you know, relatively early and do some yoga and chanting and meditation, have cold showers. And one of my life coaches, she said the hard way is the easy way. So, you know, having good daily practices, you gain a momentum and at first it's kind of hard, but then the momentum carries you and it becomes easy. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I, I really like um, how you, you say that about it completing 
you. We, we often think that we, we're looking outside of ourselves for things to complete us. And I think, you know, hypersexuality, porn addiction, these sorts of things, they are a distraction from ourselves, from sitting with ourselves and being able to connect with that place inside of ourselves that allows us to feel complete. Yes. And, and sometimes, you know, we, we see everybody going on these silent 10 day silent meditation retreats and trying to meditate because meditation is now the in thing and trying to do yoga. Yet people are eating crappy uh, glyphosate laden food. Glyphosate is a chemical that's been legal to spray on uh, crops, fruits and vegetables since 1983 in Canada. And that actually cuts us off uh, from our ability to digest and extract nutrients from our food. So oh. And also the soils are getting more depleted in minerals and nutrients. So there's that, not only where we cut off from the sex center, we're also cut off from the third chakra, which is all about self-esteem and digestive capabilities. Yeah. Literally the, the glyphosate goes in and creates a layer of film. So the cilia can't absorb the nutrients as well. Wow. So how, how can we sit with ourselves and feel good <laughs> yeah. when, we, when our chakras aren't even working? Exactly. And some people listening to this will say, well, chakras don't exist. And I say, well, the glands associated with them do. Yeah. The yeah. small intestine exists. And so I guess what I'm saying is like the Hatha Yoga Pradipika. Do I have it? I have one of the copies here. Um, this is actually the Kundalini Tantra uh, version of it or, or <clears throat> part of it. It okay. spends so much time talking about diet. You know, if you're going to be doing meditation and turning inward, Half the thing is talking about what you should be eating. Yeah. And, you know, and not to, not to be, um, uh, you know, too militant uh, about it, but just, you know, trying to make better choices. And I've, I found that's been really helpful because then your glands start to fire better. Um, you just start, you kind of, you kind of, you want to meditate. Yeah. You kind of start to want to meditate more and chant more and turn inwards more. I think that mm -hmm. it's our natural inclination to turn inwards when our glands are working correctly and our digestive systems firing properly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how, how would you say people can start to connect with these centers? Because we have our, we have our, our root chakra, we have our sacral chakra, um, mm -hmm. navel chakras, like these lower centers of who are, maybe, maybe you can just talk a little bit about what those are first so people can kind of have an idea because the listeners might not know exactly what that is and then maybe some ways that people can start to kind of connect with that aspect of themselves. Yeah. So there's seven chakras in most uh, yogic systems of, of um, yoga from India, at least. Yeah. And so the, so the anus is the, is the location of the first chakra. Uh, and that's all about feeling grounded and connected to your ancestors, it's kind of like bones and blood. Yeah. Uh, second chakra is right behind the sex organ. And that is, um, that's like your sexuality, that's your creativity, uh, the seat of your life force. Uh, third chakra in the Kundalini system is three fingers what's below your belly button in other systems it's the solar plexus i say it's both they're both really important centers yeah and so the uh, the navel point uh when when yogi bhajan first came to and we can talk a bit about yogi bhajan there's there have been some sex scandals which i want to i want to touch on how when we repress because in the yogic uh the indian yogic um traditions there is a lot of sexual oppression yeah. it does tend to squirt up uh in in really fucked up ways yogi bhajan Bikram, hot yoga uh, lead guy, um, Osho. If you repress it, it's going to squirt out. So anyway, oh, we can talk yeah. about that later. Okay, yeah. So third chakra, small intestines, also the solar plexus, so the pancreas. Yeah. So that's like about, you know, uh, up here would be like your, your power center, your willpower. And I would say also the, the low navel point region too. Uh, when Yogi Bhajan came, a lot of people were doing these heart opening practices and it was all about connecting to the heavens. He's like, wait, wait, wait. If you want to be able to keep your heart open, no matter what, you have to have a strong navel point. Mm -hmm. He got them to do a lot of Kriya's uh, yogic practices that help strengthen that, that small intestine region, both digestive system-wise and also the musculature of it. Because so, that's like self-esteem. Okay. And then the uh, fifth chakra is the heart. Of course, it's about love. It's kind of like the balance point between the lower chakras. It's called a lower triangle. Then the upper chakras, the higher triangle. Yeah. And then we have the, and so the gland associated with the heart chakra is the thymus gland. So it's all, especially during this time where everybody's freaking out about, um, you know, immune system issues, you, you can tap your thymus gland. And this is sort of the area that makes white blood cells. Mm, okay, cool. It's a place to, to connect with, kind of like the high heart area. Okay. We have the uh, throat, <clears throat> throat chakra. So speaking your truth and 
being confident to, to share your truth through your voice. Uh, and the associated gland is the thyroid gland, the parathyroid glands. And then we have the sixth chakra, which is an inch and a half inwards between the eyebrows. And that's all about the pituitary gland. Um, some people say that's the third eye. Yeah. Uh, and then the seventh chakra is the associated with the pineal gland. And that's right, this little pine cone right in the center of the, bra the brain. And other systems will say that's actually the third eye. I would say the pineal, hypothalamus, and pituitary all work together to be that third eye. Cool. It actually literally has rods and cones in it, just like the physical eyes. So it has a certain ability to sense how bright or how dark it is. And so it, it releases melatonin and, and serotonin throughout the day to help sort of regulate our day-night rhythms. Yeah, wow. Um, and then in terms of the glands, because pe pe people will say, well, I don't know if chakras exist. Well, they're just, they're just points of meditation to help your meditation practice. You could say it that way. Yeah. You know, cult uh, Yogi Bhajan said, cultivating your self-sensory system, your ability to turn inwards and really bring your consciousness into different parts of your body because energy goes where your focus is. So totally. if you want to be more grounded, there's another gland, but it's not really a gland. It's called the coccygeal body, and it's between the anus and the coccyx. Yeah. It's basically a body of cells. When you breathe right between your coccyx and anus, try it now. Breathe so deeply down, basically into your rectum and just behind it. It releases hormones into our system and when those mm. hormones re, uh, reach our brain we start to feel more grounded so there's a breath piece you know a really easy way to start to tap into those lower chakras is to just breathe down into your roots mm. just a you just lie on the ground for 20 minutes and do a conscious connected breath so you're you're inhaling into the low lower don chan as it's called anus sex organ navel and then into the high heart and then just let it go and it's going to start to change your the way you think cool and you feel better because the way you breathe is the way you think because the way you breathe over time influences the way that those glands secrete so the anus the first chakra is associated with the prostate gland in males yeah both males and females is associated with the adrenals. Uh, second chakra is the testes and the ovaries. Third chakra is the pancreas. Fourth chakra is the thymus. Fifth chakra is the thyroid. Sixth chakra is pituitary. And seventh chakra is pineal. Pineal, okay. So these, so really, for me, the chakras are about learning how to control the firing or the secretion of different glands in my body to help mm -hmm. me feel better. I like and from that. just sitting in the pos and I did it and I almost went crazy. It was a <laughs> day silent meditation and I started yeah. screaming and crying. We had to walk like this, literally with our hands behind our back, just walking around the premises. It was actually beautiful. It was on Demon Island. Yeah. We had to think in our minds, lifting. So I'm lifting my right foot, pressing forward, placing, lifting, pressing forward, Placing, and then yeah. I hear, then I hear a bird, so I have to go listening, listening, and then I see what happens. The birds reminding me of a time, you know, in my past when I heard a, a cockatoo, and I felt like I could use a cockatoo. You know, like you just <laughs> kind of just scratch, <laughs> you just kind of like scratch your, <laughs> you track your uh, your process of where your consciousness is going. Yeah, and it was so hard. Yeah, and. I spoke with my meditation teacher, his name's Whit Ornsberger, and he's amazing. And I said, I'm, I'm finding this really difficult because you're allowed to talk to him like every day, mm -hmm. a little segment. Yeah. He said, well, where do you live downtown? Do, like, do you live in a big city? And I said, yeah, I live downtown Vancouver. He said, well, you know, be easy on yourself. When the Dalai Lama came here to North America for the first time, he was shocked by the level of self-hate and self-loathing and self-aversion that we yeah. have in in our in our western culture that's crazy yeah because it wasn't that bad in tibet yeah he was yeah. shocked so, so he said be easy on yourself you're actually living in a sea of um a dominator system that is designed very expertly designed to make the masses feel that self-hate so that yeah. you don't 
fully uh, embody your power. It's like we're especially men, well, not especially men, but because I'm working on the men's work, I'm noticing it a lot. It's like yeah. we're all like caged, caged beasts. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, um, we have so much um, unfulfilled potential glandularly or biochemically or, yeah, biochemically speaking that when we can tap into our ability to control the secretion of our endocrine system, because the yogi said the endocrine system is the, is the guardians of health. Mm -hmm. If we can amplify the health of the endocrine system, we can uncage ourselves more so than we ever thought possible and really stand on our own two feet. Like I, I was reading your bio. I had my challenges with cocaine addiction and mm -hmm. I almost died. You know, um, I dated a fellow who died of an overdose. My cousin died of a cocaine overdose. Wow. Actually, it was fentanyl. He wasn't even over overdosing it. He was, it was just laden with a fentanyl. Yeah, I didn't realize six percent or seven. If there's only six or seven percent cocaine in any given sample in Vancouver right now, it's the rest of the baby powder and fentanyl and yeah. who knows what else they put in it. Mm -hmm. Probably mostly fentanyl. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I know the stuff works because it's helped me get off of that, and yeah. I actually can way higher now doing certain yogic practices than I ever did doing those uh, drugs. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. I started doing Kundalini yoga um, maybe eight months ago and uh, I did it for about four months straight, a couple days a week. And it has such a profound impact on, on helping me connect with those centers. And um, a lot of my, my journey over the course of the last uh, couple of years has been about um, like I said, moving away from hypersexuality and only feeling safe to connect with other men um, in a sexual way into being able to bring forth my authenticity and uh, practice intimacy and these sorts of things. And um, body connection has been such a huge part of it. I cannot, it really has been the whole thing. Like leaving my mind and entering my body has been how I've been able to do this and make this transformation. Um, what um, what advice could you give to somebody that's maybe just starting this journey? Like they're they're feeling like okay, they're not getting meaningful connection in their in their maybe their sexual relationships with people. They're wanting more, but they're a little bit unsure of how to proceed. Where where would you maybe direct somebody to? Well, I mean, what I've realized in my journey is I can only. another person doesn't have the as much of an ability to make me feel the way I most want to feel than I do. Like um, they're just a mirror for whatever's going on inside of you. So Definitely, yeah. well, I would say, you know, just remind yourself of that. If your relationships aren't really working externally, it's going to be a little bit of a, it's going to be challenging to stop that train of external searching and go, who stop. Come back in, come back in. But that's the practice of Kundalini Yoga and meditation of all different lineages is that pratyahara, withdrawal of the senses. So um, I would say just, you know, try to spend five minutes a day doing some breath work. Yeah. I find Kundalini Yoga and breath work, conscious connected breathing, to be two very powerful streams of this meditative yogic lineage mm -hmm. that... Um, that can really help people who, who struggle with like addiction or like compulsions or, or sexual thing, uh, addictions as well. Yeah. Um, because they're so like, for example, in, in Kundalini yoga, we're not just sitting there, right? We're actually usually doing something that's a little bit more active. Yeah. To keep the mind. Cause I mean, most of us Westerners, our minds are so going a hundred miles a minute. It's not very possible to just sit there because all of our self hate comes up as it was doing with me in the sound retreat. Yeah. So we have a Kriya, a, a meditation in Kundalini yoga called Kirtan Kriya, which means singing meditation. And it's basically this. So the mantra is Sata Nama Sata Nama And that means infinity, life, death, rebirth, or mm. birth, life, death, rebirth, depending on who I like teaching. that. Yeah, and so that's the mantra. And then the mudra is just over and over again. So thumb on all the fingers and just keep yeah. moving. Just keep going. Okay. And mantra mudra. And then the eye position is right between the eyebrows. So you see a lot of like the Buddha, his eyes are rolled up. Yeah. So like, his eyes are like nine tenths closed and rolled up. That's actually a technique because when you do that, it puts a pressure on the optic nerve which causes the uh, 
um, what's it called, the pineal gland to uh, radiate energetically towards the pituitary, which causes the pituitary to dump beautiful hormones into your bloodstream that make you feel more meditative. Cool. Oh, yeah, that's so really, that's cool. Yeah. I like that. Right? Yeah. Yeah, it's like, roll the eyes up, <clears throat> doing it for a reason, so try it. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. And then you sit like a, sit like a yogi with a tall spine, pull your chin in and back. And then it's mantra, mudra, eyes. And then, okay, so then there's a visualization for this one. As you're chanting, sata nama, you're imagining this white energy, this white light coming down through the crown chakra, mm -hmm. also known as the 10th gate, and then doing an L shape out the third eye. So it's like, sata nama. Ma, yes. So they've actually done studies uh, on, at Harvard on this specific meditation. And they did a, either a six or an eight week trial with the placebo control group. The placebo just was listening to nature sounds for 20 minutes a day. Mm -hmm. uh, or 12, sorry. They only did 12 minutes a day on this one. So just 12 minutes, they got huge results. The, the group being studied was instructed this Kirtan Kriya that I'm sharing with you now. Mm -hmm. And even the people who were so sick, because a lot of them had dementia, so they, were, they couldn't literally get out of their hospital beds, they still were able to do it. So you don't actually, you can still get benefits even if you're kind of slouched over. That's yeah, what yeah. Wow. So they had like a bunch of people with dementia and uh, Alzheimer's do this. And then they had their caretakers also do this. And they had the caretakers fill out the, I think the Beck depression inventory scale yeah. before, after the, the six or eight weeks. And they noticed a drastic reduction in de depression and anxiety. Very the cool. And then the, in the something also that was really cool is the people with dementia and Alzheimer's, their symptoms alleviated slightly over that period while they were doing this for 12 minutes a day. Hmm. And prana goes where your focus is. So you're actually, when you do that l shape situation, you're really, and you're doing this and you're chanting, so you're really focused inwards. You're energetically mixing the blood and the chi, bringing nutrients to the pineal gland and the hippocampus, and the memory glands, mm -hmm. and then out your third eye, so out the uh, pituitary gland. Amazing. So you're, you're actually, through this meditation, bringing a lot of blood and chi, mixing it together in your brain. So it's like really good for people with memory loss. I'm going to try that today. Do you have to say the, uh, the mantra out loud or can you say it internally or what's the best? Good question. So I'll send you, we can even put it in the show notes after. Um, sure. My friend, Nation Car has a good version on Spotify or iTunes. Perfect. Okay. It's basically you just type in Cure Tank, create a short version. Okay. And so this is where it gets a little fun. You do two minutes chanting. Out loud, Sata Nama, Sata Nama, visualizing. Then you do two minutes whispering. Sata Nama, Sata Nama. And then you do four minutes just doing the mudra and chanting it internally. Okay. So, yeah. This is awesome. I can't wait to try it. <laughs> yeah. And then you do two minutes whispering. Yeah. And then you do two minutes chanting. And then you take a deep breath and hold as long as you can. I think you hold for a minute. Cool. Okay, yeah, send it and I'll put it in the show notes. Um, so something I want to I pick your brain on is how important do you think sexuality is and, and embracing our sexuality or even sensuality for that matter in, our, in becoming our our authentic self and being authentic? I would say it's, it's uh, the same thing. I feel like um, sex, sex energy is life energy. So it's about learning how to harness and direct that energy so that you can utilize it in whatever way your life purpose calls for. Mm. Uh, there's a beautiful book called Way of the Superior Man by David Data. So even in the context of how many sexual partners should I have, he says, well, what is your life purpose? Is it going to serve your life purpose to have 50 partners or one or yeah. 20? Only you know. Yeah. But if you don't know what your purpose is, then it's going to be really hard to know what's right for you. How does, how does somebody go about finding out what their purpose is? I know a lot of people struggle with that one. Mm -hmm. 
I would say do what makes you tick. Like for me, the word, when somebody says be yourself, that just means remember what makes you tick. So if it's walking in nature, do more of that. If it's learning about medicinal mushrooms, sign up for some workshops. Yeah. Um, if you feel better around certain people or listening to certain podcasts, listen to more of those. Yeah. And then little by little, the universe will give you more and more clues and breadcrumbs as to where you're meant to go. Yeah, I like that. What, what in your experience, it gets in the way of people uh, having that experience? Because sometimes like we, we spend so much of our time trying to be somebody that we're not because of sh our shadows. We're trying to run away from who we are. And if we've been doing that for 20, 30 years, it's, it's really tough for people to have that remembrance of who I am and who, you know, so what are some things that people can pay attention to, to, to notice whether it's shame or these responses so they can start to clear that stuff so they can start to step into who they are? Good question. Breath work. Breath, breath work is yeah. the original, yeah, breath work is the original yoga and not just any type of breath work. I would say conscious connected breathing. So having a, maybe setting a 30 to 40 day challenge where you were lying down every day, making it like your habit yeah. and you're, you're, I can give a couple links of some amazing breathwork facilitators and just some free stuff on YouTube. Okay. Basically you just lie down and you just start to breathe really deeply. Like, cause we're not used to breathing so deeply yeah. and it's going to come up. And every time you start to create stories and go back into stories, drop yourself out of the story, come back into your body. Yeah. It's been said, if you want to feel better, you have to get better at feeling. Yeah, exactly. I love that. And it's going to try to control because it's that's what the brain, the ego has been trying to do all of our lives is to keep us safe. So you just have to be in a safe space, a quiet space and say, you know what, brain, thank you so much for all your protection over the years. But now it's time for you to relax. And I'm going to come into my body now. <clears throat> it is safe for me to be in my body. I'll say affirmations out loud. Yeah, I, I still get caught. We all get caught in our brains. So yeah, of course. It's safe for me to be in my body. It feels so good to breathe. No one can take my power away from me. Mm. Those are three affirmations I like to use. Mm, I like and that. I feel like you're, you're an empath as well. I know yeah. you are because you're, you're attracted to Matt Kahn. <laughs> yeah. Um, so he says, I love that. Oh, isn't he great? Yeah. Yeah. Um, he says, may the energy, and especially at this time when everybody's freaking out, may the energy I'm sensing from others be cleared away, transmuted completely, <laughs> yeah. and returned to source. To return to source, yeah. And so it is. I've so been I'll listening. In my breath work. Yeah, I love it. I've been listening to Matt Khan since I was 24. I think, like, since he basically put his first video out on, on YouTube, I have listened to every single one of his videos. Um, He's, he's the one person that's had the most profound impact on my spiritual development over anybody, which is so interesting because I've never met him. <laughs> and yeah. uh, I'm going to try and reach out to him and see if he'll, he'll be on the podcast. And I'd love to pick his brain for a bit. But uh, How old are you now? Pardon? How old are you now? 34. Nice. I'm 34 as well. Yeah. Yeah. We have the same birth year. And I think your birthday's the 19th of July, correct? 18th. 18th. Yeah, yeah. So you're you're a Cancer. I'm a Gemini. We're I just I, I looked up that sort of stuff because I'm 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 into that sort of stuff to a certain degree, but um, I just feel a lot of very similar um, energy between you and I. And I, I'm um, yeah, it's it's just really cool to be able to feel connected. There, there's one question that I have for you because this is um, we're both on the on the the journey of being more authentic, bringing forth all of who we are, and, and kind of teaching people how to do that. And I know for me, I still get the odd vulnerability hangover when I'm, when I'm really vulnerable or I share a deep aspect of myself, there's a period where I can maybe feel a little bit of vulnerability hangover. Do you experience that? And if you do, uh, how do you deal with that? Oh, yeah. And I like that term. I, um, Brené Brown, have you read much Brené Brown? Yeah. She's like my second favorite after Matt. Yeah, she, <laughs> have you seen her, her relatively new uh, Netflix special? Yeah, I did. Yeah. That's so good. Yeah. She's great. Yeah, so I think that really comes up in, in, in all of us, whether you're in the nosebleeds or if you're down in the arena getting your ass kicked like, like we are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and it's not like we're always getting our ass kicked, but no, I like yeah. that if you're in the arena, you will get your ass kicked. Yeah. Um, and the thing that helps me 
with vulnerability hangovers is really practicing and always reminding myself, especially when I'm feeling like I'm having a vulnerability hangover and or I'm being criticized and I'm tempted to take it personally instead of just taking the, the gold and leaving the rest. Yes, yes. That is her statement. Only take feedback from people well, here's one. This is from Mastin Kip. Only take feedback from people who have what you want. Otherwise, they're just guessing. Exactly. And chances are guessing wrong. So that's one. And then she says, you know the people who, who you basically should get feedback from and criticism and, and really take it to heart? Those people are the ones who love you not despite your vulnerability and imperfection, but because of your vulnerability. And yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Everybody can stand outside the ring and point and tell you, you know, give you all this feedback and, and try and trigger you and, and whatever, but it really is a reflection of where they're at, right? And I, I, take, I take feedback seriously from people who are willing to get into the ring mm -hmm. as well and have had experience of being in the ring, right? Because it's, um, those are the people that I'm really interested in hearing about and hearing from, especially when they're willing to give feedback and stuff is because they, they get it. Right. It's it's a it's 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 not easy bringing forth the most authentic and real expression of who we are, because it's when we get critiqued for that version of ourselves, it's painful. It can be really painful than being mm -hmm. criticized for our masks. Right. Because you can easily peel it off and put on a different one. Right. But uh, well, it's painful because we're not allowed, especially as men, to, to cry or to or to get angry. Yeah. Men and women are not allowed to get angry. Trans people, no one's allowed to get angry. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. If you question the dominator system, you will get a fine. Yeah. <laughs> beach, up in the naked beach, now you will get a $250 fine, girlfriend. <laughs> like you're not allowed to do it. So, you know, I think it would be a lot easier to um, take criticism, difficult criticism. Yeah. If we were allowed to scream into a pillow after, if we were taught to do that and that that's okay. Yeah. I like that. One of the things I teach, uh, teach people is um, in my own coaching is we have to be in touch with uh, our ability to release energy because if we distract ourselves from stillness and we distract ourselves from our feelings, they accumulate inside of us. And if you notice what animals do is like dogs, ducks, anything, whenever there's conflict or they're, they're in a heightened state of emotion or, or whatever they're experiencing, heightened state of adrenaline, they afterwards, they flap or they shake and they just expel that energy and they move on with their day. Human beings, our ego mechanism teaches us to repress and to, to shove it down because we don't want to experience it. And then it ends up becoming this, this whole layer, this onion inside of us that we're trying to then therefore carry around with us. And no wonder we don't want to be authentic and, and, and bring out our, our most authentic aspects of ourselves because we're scared of it. Well, yeah, and it, it actually feels good to scream and it does feel good to shake. Yeah. It feels release trauma once you give yourself permission to do it and you make it a habit as you were saying animals do it all the time yeah so then it's actually wow it actually feels really good to go to that dark place or at least it feels a lot better than all the years that i spent repressing it exactly yeah and i think uh for people who are new to that i think it is really important to have a qualified facilitator there yeah um, i i met a fellow named edward dangerfield he now lives in bali He's an amazing breathwork facilitator and he really helped me work through some of my trauma just by holding space and he knew what pressure points to to, to press into as i was having a having a release yeah and i remember we were in one circle and i because it's like matt Kahn. you're actually like a human air purifier is an empath so you, most of the stuff that you're processing isn't even yours i know yeah Right. So it's like, oh, so I was in this breath circle and I just started to scream and cry. And I was where there's part of me going like, oh, I hope I don't disrupt everybody else in the circle. And um, I think it was something that there was sort of a story about um, my ancestors, my Caucasian ancestors coming over as colonialists and raping and pillaging the First Nations people. There was something about that and me being upset about all that and how the First Nations people are still disenfranchised in so many ways. Yeah. And so I, and then, Ed, and right when all that was going on in my brain, Edward came over, he said, uh, drop out a story, feel it, feel it. He just kept saying, feel it. And I screamed more and more and crying and this and that. And then uh, we had a share and then it went away. And, and then we were just instructed to just sort of lie there for like 20 minutes to 30 minutes. 
and kind of you know, integrate and recuperate. And uh, we had a sharing circle after that and there was a woman across from me and she looked into my eyes and I thought she was gonna get upset at me for being so loud and she said, you gave me permission to feel, you know, I, I wanted to scream that loud when I was going through childbirth or when I was being raped by that guy. And she listed a bunch of events in her life where she wanted to do that, but she stifled herself. Wow. And so she said, thank you, because that actually helped me have a catharsis by hearing you scream. And I said, Amazing. oh, yeah. So we're all in this together and we heal in circle. Yeah. And I, I really think that it actually does feel better to cry and scream. Like I cry and scream pretty much once a day now. Yeah. You know, I, I, um, I need to, Yeah. I need to, and it, you know, I had a, I did a little breath work before and I will do some after where I'll probably start screaming. I'm trying to be too loud, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's really important. We're just like shaking my body and we yeah. need that, especially yeah. when you're living downtown in busy cities, Yeah. You're picking other people's stuff. You need to, and I love how Matt Kahn says, and return to source. Mm -hmm. Don't let it become part of your identity. Yeah. Just, process it and let it return to source and spend lots of time in nature. Yeah. I so love you that. Can yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, something I wanted to touch on is, um, so what I noticed that I'm attracting in my life, and I think it's because of where I'm at on my journey is a lot of people wanting to heal through their shame. And I know shame is stored in our bodies. It's stored in our centers and our, in our chakras as well. And, and, um, what I want to maybe bring it into the flavors of what I want to bring it into is masculine and feminine, because this is a big thing that's happening right now in our society. And, and we're starting to kind of feel this energy of the rising feminine coming back into yes. power, but not the, the funny thing about it is the masculine energy thinks that it's going to rise up and it's going to be this, the, the masculine is going to become submissive. It's not about that. It's because it's restoring balance. Yeah. And we are masculine and feminine, each one of us. Exactly. So yeah, I want, to, I want you to talk a little bit about that and how people can use that masculine, feminine kind of ideology to understand their sexuality and maybe to kind of even work through shame. Can you say that one more time? It's good. Yeah. It's the masculine, femininity. Yeah. Say, so just say it one more time, that last chunk. Oh yeah. So basically uh, t helping people understand the masculine feminine ideology and kind of how we are both centers and how that can be related to, sh to shame. Because I know a lot of people, um, specifically men, really struggle with embracing their feminine aspects. And there's a lot of shame around embracing femininity. And uh, it's, it's preventing a lot of intimacy, connection, these sorts of things. And I, wanted, I want you to kind of share your two cents on that. Yes. Well, I mean, I think we have to give ourselves some credit that it's been very hard, not only from the dominator system and, and the whole mo toxic machismo uh, ideology that Hollywood has propagated, uh, <laughs> yeah. but the toxins in, in, in the environment make it very hard on a, a glandular biochemical level uh, to be a male. Mm -hmm. For example, all those Lululemon clothes are made of polyester, and every time we wash them, they release little micro beads of plastic which are xenoestrogens into the environment. And then for example, the fish eat the plastic, we eat the fish and our sperm count goes down. Sperm count is uh, the poorest it's been in a hundred years of monitoring it. It's wow. so bad. Impotency is up the, is skyrocketing. And, and, and all these male sexual issues and female issues. I was told, my, my, sorry, my friend was told that she was infertile by an allopathic physician. She was devastated. Hmm. And then she went to a naturopath and the naturopath said, well, okay, let's give you a little acupuncture. Let's chill you out a bit. And then she said to my friend, what are you, what do you eat? And my friend, they, they wrote out like sort of a diet diary. And, well, she's eating like deli meats, like three times a day. Like, <laughs> oh, dear. like shit deli meats from like save on <laughs> that are like filled with like nitrate. nitrates. Yeah. And you know, just hormone disruptors left, right, and center. So that so the naturopath was like, well, maybe just like cut back on that a bit. <laughs> so she cut it out, and then within a few years, she's she was pregnant. Yeah. She was told she was infertile, and then she has another baby. She's got two kids. Yeah. So so anyway, that's just an example of yeah. someone I know who you know. And for me, my addiction 
was Stouffer's macaroni and cheese. <laughs> Frozen macaroni and cheese. I was this fat little choir boy, and I basically lived on M&M's meat shop and Stouffer's frozen macaroni dinner meals. Yeah. And so I just remember being this fat little kid with glasses, and I just didn't feel like a man at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Because what was I eating? Well, I did some research, and those Stouffer's frozen macaroni and cheese dishes have tons of estrogen in them. <laughs> yeah. Tons of xeno, like fake estrogens. So it was totally pinching off my ability to be who I really am on a, on a chemical, physiological level. Yeah. And, and it's impossible to separate our spirit from our bodies. Definitely. And so now I'm, I'm working, this is my new thing. My body is my Ferrari for my soul. Yeah. You know, I would put shitty food, fuel in my expensive Ferrari. Yeah. So it's like, you gotta love this, this body temple and give it really good fuel. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm working with a superfoods company based out of LA. And I'm, I'm taking these really nutrient dense superfoods all the time now. And I feel so much better. Yeah. It's so much easier to meditate, to do breath work. Cause you need energy to process the trauma to, um, to relate to other men has been huge. I've noticed, uh, semen retention is another thing that has helped me changing up my diet, getting enough sleep and semen retention. So helpful. What is semen retention? Semen retention is where it's an ancient Chinese practice. The ancient yogis used it as well, where you prolong the space of time between your ejaculations. So most guys, you know, are in our culture ejaculating people I speak with, you know, sometimes a few times a day, mm -hmm. a few times a week, twice a day, six times a day. <laughs> Yeah, and then they're wondering why they, they don't really feel like a man. So they have to act like a toxic man that they see in either porn and be abusive towards women or uh, some sort of Hollywood, you know, Leonardo DiCaprio, Wolf of Wall Street image. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's impossible to feel like who you really are as a man if you don't have enough glandular secretion going on. Yeah. Impossible. So what do so, you recommend to people? So semen retention is, is a great way to reset your tes testicles, essentially, yeah. so that you have more juice to feel like a man with, so then you don't have to act as much. Because mm. you, have, you have more to work with internally. You literally have more testosterone. You have more minerals and nutrients. It yeah. takes the body so much to create sperm. Sperm is like, even uh, takes more to create than blood, apparently. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not saying never ejaculate. Yeah, but just try. Just try maybe doing a 21 day challenge where you don't come for 21 days. Yeah, I would say you can touch yourself as much as you want. If you're in a healthy sexual relationship, you can have sex as much as you want. But try to control how many ejaculations you're having on a mm. regular basis. Yeah, interesting. Because I when I was ejaculating even once a week, I was in a state of ejaculation hangover. For me, yeah, everybody's different. Yeah, I think I. I had a lot of cleaning out to do from all the glyphosate and the Stouffer's macaroni and cheeses that I've been <laughs> doing most of my life. Yeah. <laughs> so I still, I still, even before this interview, I had a craving for frozen macaroni and cheese. Yeah. I want it. And so That's sometimes I'll treat myself, sometimes I'll treat myself and I'll go to the frozen food section and I'll get Amy's frozen macaroni and cheese. Okay. The healthier it's, version. It's 87% organic. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I feel better. But uh, yeah, so I would just encourage guys to just try it. You know, don't knock it till you try it. It might, it might help you. For me, it's really helped me. And it's really hard to do if you don't have a breath work or a kundalini or a yoga practice. Totally, yeah. And, and, move the energy. Yeah, and we're talking about people like, let's say they're, they've been addicted to porn or, or whatever. Like, people don't like that term addicted to porn, but they, let's say they're compulsively using porn. Um, and they're masturbating two to three times a day, and they're that's the that's the energy that they're connected to is their sexual energy. But what what would you say that they're that they're 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 missing, or that they're like why are they doing that? Why are people engaging in such compulsive sexual behaviors? Because it's easy, it's so easy, it's so accessible, it's free now. There's yeah. like porn, it's just there. Um, I think it screws up our dopamine. Uh, some, it's something goes on with the dopamine in the brain. I don't, I, haven't I agree. Yeah. But something happens where you, it's like when I used to do cocaine, I would snort some cocaine and I'd feel great for 20 minutes and I'd start to feel shitty again. So I needed yeah. to do 
Yeah, up and down, up and down. So, so, it, so it sucks you in and it's a slippery slope. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't villainize porn. I actually think porn can be used um, intelligently to actually enhance your masculinity. Um, 99% of the porn out there is, is very misogynistic and very depleting, yeah, I believe. I agree, yeah. But there is 1% of porn that can be very um, beautiful. Uh, do you know Davey Wavy? Are you familiar with Davey Wavy? No. He's a YouTube, a, a gay identified YouTube personality, and he's been, he's been in the YouTube game since its inception. And um, he just started a pornography company as well. He's very straight laced. He doesn't drink. He's never drunk, but he's very straight laced. Mm -hmm. um, his pornography company is called Him Eros, I believe. Okay. Him Eros. And he does like, he like teaches tantric techniques. He teaches sexual kung fu on there. Um, the pornography is very high level. It's got like story. It's very egalitarian. Um, cool. I bought his, uh, what's it called? I think it was like a multi orgasmic like learn how to have a full body orgasm without ejaculating course. Hmm. It was amazing. It was beautiful. That's um, very cool. Yeah. So there is porn out there. That's actually, it can actually help us. One thing I learned from a friend that I like to do is like, if I choose to watch porn, I'll make it like a ceremony because yeah. anthropologist Wendy Mandy says anything outside of ceremony, including sex is bad for humans. Yeah. So, so making it a ceremony or ritual. Yeah. And then, blessing the actors that i'm about to watch and like thank you for for bringing me this pleasure and joy yeah and then watching it and not ejaculating yeah that's interesting that is really interesting i what i've done is i've limited myself to once a week to watch porn and I even notice that when I do that afterwards, like I, there's a little bit of anticipation about it. it. It feels pleasurable. But then afterwards, I'm just like, ugh, I just feel Huge so weird. yucky. And I'm like, it just, it didn't. Yeah, I definitely would ejaculate. And, uh, and, but what I'm wanting to play with a little bit more, and, and the reason why I took your sexual f uh, Kung Fu class on, on Pornhub was because I want us to try practicing that is being, being more erotic and more sensual with, with my body and with myself and being able to explore without having to have a destination. That's a big, big aspect for me because I think a lot of people, it's always about the destination. How can I arrive to my destination with the most pleasure? Where really the, the, the sex and, and masturbation really is about the journey, yes. in my opinion. And that's what I'm relearning right now. Relearning the pace of how I engage with my body in a sexual way. That's beautiful. Totally, yeah. yeah. Abraham says the joy is in the journey. And we know that, but it can be a little bit like, oh, but I just want to get to the end. Like, come on, let's do this. Yeah. Uh, and that's where, for me, Kundalini Yoga has really come in handy because they force, they force it. They, they invited us strongly to yeah. get up at 30 in the morning for 40 days and, you know, do two and a half hours of yoga meditation, and have yeah. a cold shower, blast ourselves with cold shower water at, at three in the morning. <laughs> Yeah. It is. Like, oh. But like then, but then the joy, then if you do that every day, the whole day is, the rest of the day is a lot easier. And yeah. then you train your nervous system to get stronger so that you can actually on a nervous system endocrine level actually experience more joy just sitting. So when I'm doing my taxes, I'll like <laughs> use my rectum a bit and like, <laughs> and I'll, just like keep, I'll make it like a yoga class. I'll be like, engage my core a bit, feel my nuts, do some testicle breathing, breathe down into my nuts, feel my nuts spinning. And you know, it's my mother calls, or just calls me and I'm like, no, come back. Or, you know, or like, somebody yells at me. I'm like, oh, it's just so, and I feel my nuts spinning. I'm like, this is like foreplay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Kind of just, uh, if you can stay in your, in your sexual power and your center, then everything can become more pleasurable. Yes. Even doing taxes. Yeah, I like or that. Or even meditating, right? The monks, the, I'm sorry, monks, but you guys have a lot of diabetes. Yeah. They, the monks are taught to go right to loving kindness. They're not allowed to have sex. They're not allowed to express rage. And they all have diabetes. Not all of them, but the rates are quite like high. Like pancreas, because the association with the pancreas and the sacral, right? Yeah. Or, um, there's a researcher who thinks that it's because, i got to get this right. I want to bastardize the study. When you're taught to go right to loving kindness, because like the Chinese have raped and pillaged the Tibetans for a long time, and they so that the Tibetan monks aren't allowed to get angry about that, but they have all this pent up rage because all that stuff happened. 
they're taught from a very young age to don't don't don't, don't get angry don't get angry yeah just sit there and smile yeah. just sit there and smile just feel loving kindness so that so they're repressing all that rage and when you go right to loving kindness it releases lots and lots of endorphins into the bloodstream so they're constantly releasing endorphins into their bloodstream. But what this researchers found out, it was in Dr. Christian Northrup's book, Dodging Energy Vampires. Um, when you're constantly flooding your bloodstream with dope, with um, endorphins through the practice of meta, which is loving kindness, which is what their main practice is. Yeah. It affects the reuptake of glucose negatively. Hmm. So that's the theory that it's affecting. So they're literally sugarcoating their anger yeah it's interesting because the, the, the what you just said there reminded me of monks seem to be more uh, repressive of masculine energy and expressive of feminine right whereas we over in western world it seems like we're more over identifying with masculine and not identifying enough with feminine so i'm i'm really excited for this awakening uh, this planet's going through right now where we're we're, we're integrating our shadows we're working through some of this energy of of repression of, of feminine so we can then start to embody and embrace all that we are not just aspects of, of who we are but all of who we are and bring that forward and that's that's my that's like when, when i dream about a beautiful world that's what i dream about i dream about people being able to show up in every expression of who they are which is why i'm so drawn to people like you and people who are living their truth because it's so refreshing you know, in a world where there's just so many people not living who they are, they're living what other people think they need to be. And that, that to me is an exhausting way to live. So, you know, it's, I'm just, I'm just very grateful for people like you. Oh, thanks. I, yeah. I appreciate that. Um, mm. You know, there's, there's, it's cool to see, um, even in the realm of sexuality in terms of orientation, it's becoming more fluid and porous for many of us. And, You'll listen to it, you know, 10 years ago, podcasts were very, um, very heteronormative, sort of macho, kind of like, oh, I'm a biohacker, yeah, I'm gonna, you know, get all the women, get all, eat all the pussy, oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put red light on my testicles, and <laughs> like, oh, I'm a biohacker, <laughs> Bill <Yeah>. Pufkoff. <Puff. laughs> and now, you know, people like Aubrey Marcus, uh, who runs on it, um, he's saying things like, yeah, you know, I think. Every, every man is at least 8% gay. Like, I don't give a shit, but, you know, you can be 12% gay, you can be 3% gay, you can be 50% gay, but nobody's under 8% gay. Yeah. Like, you know, he's saying that. And that's, so people are, are becoming more open, I think, to um, diversity and fluidity. Yeah, I agree. Um, one of the Kundalini yogis said at some point during this new age, because now we're in the Aquarian age, which is more about sexual freedom and about being who you really are. Mm -hmm. Uh, the polarities are going to dissolve. So I don't know what uh, that actually means, but it yeah. feels good. Yeah, it does feel good. <laughs> yeah, so just, instead of it being maybe this binary, we're all just going to be and we be, and we're going to stop looking for evidence to the contrary of our dream of yeah. just being ourselves. Exactly. Because every we turn around and see that the status quo hasn't come along with us, we pinch ourselves apart, we defy our own dream, and then we blame them for feeling like shit. Exactly. That's so, such a good way to put it, yeah. Like keep your eye on your dream and just live it. Yeah. And don't look back in the rear view mirror other than to look and see how far you've come. doesn't matter what other yeah. people are doing. Just keep on, keep on trucking forward. Right. That's, that's, yeah. that's the real way to be authentic. Don't look back. Don't see what other people are doing. Quit comparing ourselves to others. Just be who you are. Own who you are. Right. Have fun in your Ferrari. Have fun in your Ferrari. Exactly. Uh, I want to give you an opportunity to talk um, a bit about your sexual Kung Fu. Mm -hmm. So for people that don't know what sexual Kung Fu is, which I'm sure a lot of people are going to be in that category, uh, why don't you refresh us? Sexual Kung Fu is the Chinese medical equivalent of tantric yoga. I'm sure a lot of people have heard of tantra, right? Yeah. When I first heard tantra, I think like Sting, the musician, <laughs> the old had like marathon sex with his wife for 16 hours without coming which is kind of like part of Tantra. Yeah. The joys in the journey, right? Yeah. So sexual Kung Fu is like this ancient Chinese form of bedroom art yoga that was created by the con when certain emperors had like 500 female concubines. They're like, whoa, like how do I please all these women without like, you know, getting really tired. They realized that if they withheld their sperm, they could 
have tons of tantric sex with lots and lots of people and not get tired. Mm. So that's one sort of myth. I'm not sure the the actual, like if that's actually true, but that's what I was taught by a bunch of teachers. Um, so yeah, sexual Kung Fu is basically, oh no, there's one more thing of ancient, sort of ancient uh, history of it. Doctors in ancient China, like mainstream doctors of their time, used a lot of things like herbs to help people. And they also use sex and masturbation to help people. Mm. So if a patient came like complaining of like a kidney issue, for example, they say, okay, well, I want you to go home with your partner and have <laughs> sex in this specific position like eight times this week. And also I want you to masturbate in this way and like press the head of your penis like 12 times a day and like take your penis, pull back your foreskin and then like put some oil on, some castor oil and like go like that 150 times every morning and every night. And then like slap your balls as you have a cold shower. Like they like, they like get a, a sexual Kung Fu prescription. Wow, interesting. For individual um, as part of their healing regime. Yeah. And I mean, that's a far cry from allopathic medicine. Okay? <laughs> yeah, Which, exactly. well, like, just write out a prescription pad. That's all they do. <laughs> like, here's a pill. Yeah. Right. So yeah. yeah. And so like Viagra and, and like Cialis, like very high rates of, of that being prescribed right now. It's crazy. But it's like, oh, like you can actually just by retaining your sperm and like eating a bit healthier. And there's certain Chinese herbs that are like way more potent than viagra and cialis or at least way longer lasting with less side effects yeah uh, cordyceps mushroom oh amazing hmm. uh, there's a company out of canada called harmonic arts um and cordyceps mushroom there they've got this one it's quite expensive it's like 60 bucks for a, a pottle of it like that yeah. but you only need support and it's used by the chinese right now in the olympic team to enhance the ability to absorb oxygen and it it's weird because when, when you have it, you start to feel very potent. You start to feel very sexy and, and masculine. Mm. It's quite fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You want to like enhance your divine masculine, have some like good quality cordyceps mushroom. Okay. Uh, like half an hour before you're going to masturbate or have sex. And that'll just, it's very good. Yeah, interesting. interesting. <laughs> it's super fun. Yeah. I had no idea that there was reflexology points on the penis. I learned that in your, in your class. Yes. Yes. Um, so basically it's like the base of the shaft is like kind of the lower glands and the lo like the small and large intestine. And then as you work your way up the penis, that gets into the higher and higher chakras. Mm. Yeah. yeah also the good foot, um, uh, he massage like the, uh, what's this called? The ball, of the foot. Yeah. That's, that's really good for like the, uh, the kidneys. Mm. I think specifically right there, that's the kidney. And yeah. then all well, this area is all your different internal organs. Hmm. So it's really healthy to massage your feet. Also very grounding. Yeah. My, if you're into Ayurveda at all, but my uh, dosha yeah. is vata, so I'm very airy. Yeah. So I will be spending the rest of my life, according to my astrologer, doing things and looking for things and hanging around people who are grounded, you know? Yeah. And I, that's so true. I'm always walking around barefoot because I need to be grounded. Um, I'm the same. I'm the same. I'm Pita as well. Okay, I'm Vata, but yes, close. Oh, Vata. Okay, what's what's the one where you're supposed to avoid spicy foods? I think that's Pita, right? I where, think where you're always hot. And, yes. Um, yeah. So I'm Pita. Pita and Vata are both. Yeah, Pitta. you could even maybe Pita Vata sometimes. Yeah. Maybe. Two. Yeah. Maybe or maybe yeah. even Pita. Yeah, maybe Pita. I don't know. You know, I, I, I'm not an expert yeah. in that. But uh, yeah, it's it's very interesting stuff. And um, yes, what were you? What were we talking about? Yeah, I know. It's like, um, oh, oh about sexual kung fu and just the, yeah. the, the points. Yeah. Yeah. So this point right there um, is super grounding. So like if you're ever feeling ungrounded, just bringing your consciousness to that point on both both feet. Hmm. And like, I really like to do sexual kung fu outside, sometimes in water up to my knees. Yeah. On the soil or grass and just really grounding myself. A lot of the Indian yogas are very heavenly based, but sexual energy isn't from heaven. It's from the earth. Mm -hmm. The earth is a very sexy planet. There's a lot of water, a very watery, very sexy, very live planet. So sexual Kung Fu is as a very focused on the earth and gathering energy from the earth and bringing it into your cock and balls or mm -hmm. into your ovaries uh, and getting really earthy. And I did a lot of Kundalini yoga. I love it. But for me, it's like, 
the cayenne pepper now to my practice. It's very <laughs> spicy. Yeah. And I don't want to be doing too much of it because then I just get overheated. Yeah. Also in Kundalini Yoga, at least in classical Kundalini Yoga, as taught by uh, you know the most the most popular Yogi Bhajan, they were constantly bringing the energy up, up, up. Very rarely were they bringing it back down. So Mantak Chia, who brought uh, sexual kung fu to the West, he said, "If you're Vata, you shouldn't always be focusing here and bring the energy up here. You'll get a Kundalini headache." I was constantly getting Kundalini headaches. Hmm. Interesting. So I started doing practices like this where I'm actually giving myself permission to focus on my cock and balls, coming into a horse stance, doing it in nature, usually naked with a bunch of other guys. So it's kind of like when women get together, they they start to have ovulate on the same cycle. Mm -hmm. When men get together, we start, to, you know, if, if you're around one really grounded man, you start to take on those traits through osmosis. So, you know, I believe that actually you can enhance your testosterone and masculinity just by hanging around men naked, doing shit like this, right? <sighs> So you make claws and yeah. you take the energy from the earth and you bring it into your lower Don Chan. <sighs> Squeeze your rectum so that you don't leak it out. <sighs> you can do another one where you kind of like uh, inhale, arch the back and then exhale, squeeze the rectum, sex organ, navel, and you can make fist. Cool. Yeah, I've done that one in Kundalini before. Nice. I like it. And like for people that want to see what he's doing, you can you can watch this episode on YouTube as well. I, put, I upload all of my my podcast stuff on YouTube, so you'll be able to see what he's doing and some of the demonstrations he's doing. It's really cool stuff. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So just and also roaring, like like roar, like making sort of primal sounds, I think is also really beneficial. It's interesting when a lot of guys, uh, you know, take on the label of "I am gay" now. Their voice starts to come up like this. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so gay right now, you know. And and sometimes that's who they really are. But other yeah. times, you no, know, that's not who you really are. And also, when guys are like straight, or sometimes they they talk like I hunt. Yeah. Sometimes and it's like that's not them either. Yeah. So so I, I I find it fun to like encourage guys to play with their voice and find like what's really their voice. Yeah, that's a, that's a huge, you just made me think of something really, uh, when I was younger and I was kind of going through that period of, of being right in the, 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 the pits of shame that I was in, I would try to change my voice. I would monitor myself and make sure that I wasn't saying or doing anything. So that's like a real repression. And when you, when you do reclaim your voice, it's, it's so beautiful. And the experience I'm having now, cause I feel like I've, I've processed most of my shame. I feel like I've worked with my shame wounds and, and I sometimes will be talking and I'll listen to myself talk and I have this like this overwhelming feeling of love for just the sound of my own voice. It just feels so real and it feels so it's it's uh, it's so it's just such an interesting experience. It's like my soul is speaking instead of my mind is speaking. It's a different experience experience to be able to hear yourself. When you speak you're speaking from your your glands like you're speaking from your cock and balls. Yeah. It's like you've purified your sexual energy to the point where now it's bubbling up into your heart and out of your into your throat chakra and you're making you're actually expressing your purified sexual energy yeah that's what i feel yeah it's interesting i yeah. like it whatever's happening i'm just enjoying it <laughs> it's a great practice to to purify the sexual energy is um chanting into your cock and balls yeah like chanting into your rectum sex organ navel just like om namah shivaya like on you know any sort of masculine mantra any kind of mantra that resonates with you it could be hallelujah it could be om yeah. Just like bringing your attention inwards and purifying the sexual energy. And then it naturally, as, as it's doing with Matthew's voice, it'll come up into your heart, into your throat, and then it'll just be you. You're really yeah. just, you know, sex energy really is life energy. It is. Yeah. And one of the best ways to own and become more authentic, because that's such a beautiful uh, expression of our authenticity is our voice, letting ourselves be heard and seen. Um, okay, so I have a cool thing that I do with all my guests. It's called How Much of Me Can I Be? So I don't think you're going to struggle with this one at all. But uh, basically, I've just come up with a, a list of questions. And it's a random question that you get to choose uh, based off of between number one and 31. And it's an opportunity for you to just practice expressing yourself and whatever. Um, so yeah, what, what number, between one and 31, what's your number you choose? 30 through 34. 34. There is no 34. Oh, yeah. <laughs> one in 31. <laughs> one in 31. Pick 30. You can make up a 34th question if you'd like. I, I'll go for one. 
for one. Okay. What are three things you love most about yourself? I love my hairy testicles. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, You're hilarious. How did I know you would say that? (laughs) What's two more things you love about yourself? I like how disciplined I can be. Mm. I I like my, I love my ability to uh, like take really hard steps in the name of the, of the vision. Um, But, and that, but then I'm starting to realize that really, you know, it's like, It, di- it didn't have to be as hard as I was making it, but sometimes it's fucking hard. Let's get real, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hard, it's really hard to be yourself sometimes so, um, in a world that's it's seemingly trying to get you to be who you're not. But what yeah. I like that quote, perhaps all those fairy dragons are really just beautiful princesses in disguise waiting for us to be courageous and brave. Yeah. And so, you know, but yeah, so I like my ability. I, I there I've been through really difficult things where I've really had to focus and I've done it. And so I'm great. I'm grateful for that ability to really just do, do what needs to be done. Yeah. Um, and then, um, something else I love about myself. Hmm. I love my, I'll just like my, I don't know if it's really myself, but I love my sadhana, like my daily spiritual practice. Mm. I love that. I love that I have the opportunity to do it every day. It's not always exactly the same, but I do some form of Kundalini yoga, some form of breath work and some form of meditation, chanting sacred scripture kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. And I do like a gratitude. I like, it's called the five minute journal. Mm-hmm. yeah so i like to do that it's like basically like three things you're grateful for three things that would make today great um you know and then you do it at the end of the day as well and then you do like an i am statement for the day yeah That's, so those those are three things that i love about i love myself. it i love it i love it i wake up every morning and do i am statements that's the first thing i do so i wake oh. up my eyes open and i uh I, I practice i am statements just whatever comes to me i am beautiful I am abundant, I am whatever, and it's just a great way to start to change the vibration, or, or not even change it, it's just a way to affirm the vibration of, of who I am. Great. Yeah. I have a teacher who, uh, her name's Tara Bianco, she was, she's speaking to our men's group, he's like, oh, try I choose statements. So I've been toying with that too, kind of going back and forth, because she said it's more powerful, it's like, I, it's a choice that you make every day, it's like I choose to feel beautiful. I choose, you know, to be strong today. Oh, I like that. Yeah, I like that. I'm going to try that one too. See what resonates. Yeah. Um, okay. And then I always like to pick brains as far as um, a tip. So this is me tip of the week. This is me is all about self-ownership. So how can we um, own who we are? So what's one piece of advice that you would give the listeners in how they can, they can own who they are and become more authentic and live their purpose? Hmm. Let your mess be your message. So instead of trying to hide from the shameful things, let it be like your platform that you can share from. Um, Yeah, because it takes a lot of energy to hide it. It's like, no, just stand on top of it. (laughs) And own it, yeah. And, and And so like we're all on different, you know, in certain places in our lives, it'll feel like we're on the mountain and other compartments of our lives it'll feel like we're still climbing so it's like uh lisa nichols i think she's like i'll never forget the crawl the walk the leap the run the soar because i wasn't helicopter landed here <laughs> like i had to climb up the hill yeah. you know so giving yourself credit for like wherever you are on the hill and yeah. enjoy the journey 
Exactly, yeah. It's like Miley Ray Cyrus. <laughs> Always gonna be another mountain. Always gonna wanna make it move. Always gonna be an uphill battle. Sometimes I'm gonna have to lose. Ain't about how fast I get there. Mm. Ain't about what's waiting on the other side. It's the climb. Oh, I love it. You have such a beautiful voice. That's the one thing I love about you. Oh, thank you. Your voice and how you use it, not just to sing, but to speak your truth. Thank you. Really. Brother. Do you mind being called brother? Some no, not at all. No, brother's good. Um, so how can people find you? How can people connect to you? Because I feel like people are going to want to check out your stuff. I'm going to obviously share everything in the show notes. So if people don't worry about it, but I want you to be able to, how can people connect with you? Uh, probably the best way is to just follow me on Instagram. Uh, Will Blunderfield, the naked yogi on Instagram. <laughs> okay, yeah. My life mission is I am the naked yogi. Woo. I am the naked yogi. Um, and I'm healing sexuality through love and music yes sexuality through love and music. you know your purpose and i love it yes. i love a yeah. man who knows his purpose <laughs> you too yeah. i love that you know your purpose and i love that you're um you kind of remind me of jesus of jesus <laughs> yeah like, really like, <laughs> that's funny like how i would imagine jesus to be yeah cool a very, a very um lo loving being i feel like you're a very loving being yeah, I am. I have lots of love in my heart. Yes, and the world needs more, more of that. So thank you for bringing that. Yeah. No, oh, thank you. Yeah. Namaste. <laughs> Namaste. Yeah. Follow Namaste. me on. Uh, Namaste. <laughs> follow me on uh, Instagram or uh, Facebook. Um, what was it? Yeah, just the Naked Yogi on Facebook. I actually just started a Facebook page, and I've realized I have to censor my butt on there. Yeah. Otherwise, they get. You don't want to get shut down. I got shut down. I got put in Facebook jail. I've been put in Facebook jail many times. So yeah. I, I just, <laughs> all just usually for butt cheeks. Um, yeah. And then I, I put two and two together and I did some research and I was like, oh, they just changed like the, the nudity law. So yeah. there are rules on, on social media. So you actually aren't allowed butt cheeks. Yeah. But I found a really good app where it's like relatively easy to like blur out butt cheeks. Yeah. Perfect. Well, keep yeah, so keep follow, doing you, man. Keep doing you, even if you got to blur out your butt cheeks. <laughs> yeah, if you like if you would like to see more butt cheeks in your life, uh, follow me on my OnlyFans page, onlyfans.com/slash/willblunderfield, and I teach sexual kung fu, all completely uncensored. Me and some of my bros, we get yeah. naked, and we just shake our balls around, and teach you how to do everything from testicle massage to prostate, uh, you know, strengthening um, to being able to, you know, secrete certain hormones out of your uh, pituitary gland while squeezing your rectum. <laughs> yes, yes, and I can attest to it. I tried it. I tried his class online. I um, it was really cool. It was a different experience for me, but I'm definitely going to keep uh, trying it and, and and you know, keeping an open mind and trying new things. That's what life's all about. So. Yeah, man. Uh, do you ever do cold plunging? I ha I used to have cold showers for like a whole year. I did cold showers and um, stuff like that. But I just, uh, I haven't had an opportunity to do it. I would though, if I could. I love, love dipping in the rivers and stuff in Calgary. I'm always in the summer. I'm always in the rivers and, and whatnot. But um, hey. yeah. Because it's nice to do, I find a cold shower and then do like a full body energy orgasm right after. Like you're so cold and then you just like start to shake and you just allow the shake to happen. It yeah. can get really orgasmic. Yeah, it can. Good way to burn calories too. Totally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, cool. So yeah, I honestly want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Um, it means so much to me that you gave me an hour and almost a half of your time. Um, I know time is precious and um, I'm just very grateful that you were able to come and share with myself and, and the audience. Um, so on behalf of them as well, thank you so much. <laughs> Namaste. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for having me on your show. Yeah, you bet. And uh, thank you for the audience again for tuning in. Episode six today, I got some really cool episodes coming up, some really awesome guests uh, in the pipeline coming through. Um, if you have a question for um, the how much of me can I be, feel free to send it to me and I will add it to my list so you can be part of uh, getting some of the information, the juicy information you want out of our guests. Um, but yeah, have a beautiful day, everybody. Take care.